Hello and welcome back. My name is Carlin Hunter and this is your New Life News for April. First off, we want to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to all of those celebrating those lovely events this month. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Join us this Sunday for our corporate worship at 10 a.m. You have to register at Eventbrite or our church's website. Please hurry up. Seats are filling up fast. Yeah, just Join us for Corporate Prayer Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 9 a.m. Also, don't forget to join us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing something to you called Out of the Box, where we take the practical and the biblical, mesh those two together, break them down to where everybody has a basic understanding of how to deal with the things that are going on in society today. Join Pastor Brian and Apostle Moorfield April 28th for this exciting event. And now, prepare your hearts and join us for our praise and worship. After that, you will be hearing the word from my pastor, Brian Gay.
from everything, but God is the protector. He's the source. He's our strength. Life happens. Life happens sometimes, and we get confused. We get, we get blocked. Our vision gets cloudy. And in those moments, sometimes we wonder, God, where are you? Where are you? I'm crying out to you. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I'm standing on your word. At least I think I am. I need you just to meet me right here. I need a word from you. I need to hear from you. And in those moments, God is saying, be strong and of good courage. I am with you. He says, be not afraid. Neither be dismayed because he's always with us. God already knows what you need before you ask. So when you voice it to him, he's already in the midst of that with you. He's saying, I'm here. He's saying, I'm here. So in this moment, just lift your hands and let the perfect love of the Lord just wash all over you right now. If you have any concerns, any doubts, any fears, lay them at the feet of Jesus right now. And let the perfect love cast out the fear. Because God is with you right now. He's in the midst with you. Yes, God. Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle, yes, is a place where you promise to be. As I lift my hands before you, God.
Somebody's prayer today. Meet me here today. All I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Your grace is sufficient. your presence is in this house because there's a river of life springing out of us. This morning we say spring up oh well within our soul. We say spring up oh well that makes us whole. The river of life flowing out of our innermost being is flowing out of our lips. Our worship, our adoration, our thanksgiving, our honor, our sacrifice, 
of praise to you, oh God, who woke us up this morning, who put breath in our bodies, who clothes us daily with the things that we need, God. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. And we invite you into this house. Let not man be seen, but your presence be seen. Let not man's agenda be accomplished, but let the kingdom agenda be accomplished. Let not man's words be spoken, but let the kingdom speak. Holy Spirit, we know that you are awakening the hearts of men and women in this house. We thank you for restoration in our souls as we receive the word of God. We thank you that it is life to all that find it and health to all of their flesh. We thank you that it corrects, it brings doctrine, it reproves, it gives insight and understanding that the man or woman of God will have no need for anything but be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I thank you for the equipping of your word today in the house. So Holy Spirit, our hearts are open. My mind is alert. What your word tells me I am, I am. What your word tells me I can do, I can do. What it tells me I can have, I have. Where it tells me I can go, I will go. The authority that it has given me, I will walk in it. Because I am a child of God. I am a son of God. I am an heir of the kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. If you agree with that prayer this morning, say amen with me. Amen again. Amen again. Give God a shout of praise in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, New Life Worship. Thank you for ushering in the presence of God this morning. I thank you all for being here. The Lord is truly in this place. Amen. Amen. We believe it by faith. We believe it by faith. And we know where the Spirit of the Lord is, where there is liberty, there's freedom. Hallelujah. Can you turn me down just a little bit, bro? Aren't you glad that in the presence of the Lord there is liberty? You're free to receive whatever God has for you today. I just want to make you aware of that. As this word is going forth, you are free to receive every word that God is speaking over your life in this moment. And we know that God only does those things that are good. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Just want to share an announcement with you as we move along, and then I'm going to get into the word for today. Uh, one of the things that we do here at New Life, again, our mission is people helping people through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It is our desire to become and take the kingdom of God into the community through various arenas of whether it's business, whether it's, you know, uh, offices and, and things that you do in your everyday life, but take the gospel of Jesus Christ into our community and be the hands and feet of Jesus everywhere we go. One of the partners that we are partnering with this year and, and possibly in the future continually is the Pregnancy Network. Um, we have ladies here that are already mentors to mentees within this ministry. Praise God for that. Amen. Give those ladies a hand. They're doing a phenomenal job under the leadership of Elder Claudine Robinson in our outreach ministry. And as part of that partnership, we are also helping them because they are new to Winston-Salem. They just opened up their building. Uh, we were one of the first churches that responded to them and have partnered with them since then. There are two other churches that I believe have now partnered with them, but they are having a fundraiser, okay, for young women who are going through the, the stages of, you know, pregnancy and uncertainty and just kind of helping them navigate life, you know. I've never been a woman. I've never been pregnant. I don't know what that's like to be pregnant, and then I don't know what it's like to be pregnant with a situation that you did not plan for. Um, you can only imagine the things that would possibly go through the mind, but Thank God people are here to help, to serve, to minister to them, and help them bring forth a healthy individual whom God has given them. Amen? But they're having a fundraiser. Again, it's called the Bottle Drive. It's going to begin in, on Mother's Day in May, and I believe it's going to run through Father's Day in June. So they are asking us if we would like to participate. Um, if you would like to participate, all you would need to do is just email myself or, or Elder Robinson, and we'll be able to get you a bottle. We need confirmation by April the 28th. We need confirmation by April the 28th. Or if you don't want to do a bottle drive, basically that's just collecting your change, you know, sitting in your car, in your couch, 
as you just buy stuff or just throwing that change in a bottle and filling it up by Father's Day, that money will be given to them for the distribution of helping them do what they do for many young women here in the triad. So you can either do that or you can donate on their website, thepregnancynetwork.org. So uh, if you would like to be a part of that, again, just email myself or Elder Robinson and we will get those details out and get a bottle in your hand. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Is anybody ready for the word of God? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, as you know, last week was Resurrection Sunday. Did not God move in this house? God was so good. Hallelujah. The river of life flowed, and I'm just ecstatic about what God is doing in this season, in this house, in this ministry, through each and every one of your lives individually. As testimonies come forward as to what God is doing, I'm just excited about what God is doing. We're going to continue, though, in a series that we began earlier in the month on faith, living God's reality. I believe I have maybe this one and maybe another teaching on that before we go into another series on the covenant of God. And I am ready to teach that lesson. So if you don't know what the covenant is or you want to learn about what God's covenant is, we're going to go into that in two more weeks. Everybody with me? Two more weeks. Grab a friend, grab somebody you want to walk through life with and bring them in here because it's going to be beneficial to you. But today we're going to continue in faith at work or faith in action. Again, we're talking about living God's reality. Hebrews tells us that faith is what pleases God. God is a God who rewards faith. It's not the way we feel. It's not what we're thinking about doing. It's not our opinion. He rewards his word. Those who will take his word, hold his word, speak his word, walk by his word, they will see the reality of God in their life. What is the reality of God? That's his joy. That's his peace. That's his ability to, to maintain yourself and compose yourself when things get difficult. You begin to experience his power, his grace on your life because we understand that we are saved by grace through faith. Now, just, just think about that term for just a second. The grace of God comes upon your life through this thing we call faith, believing, right? So if you could see it like a tube, a water hose. We got a fireman in the house. Anybody ever washed your car with your own hose, right? When you plug that hose up to that outlet, right, you want to wash your car. There's a nozzle on the other end, all right? That hose is faith. You release your faith by the words you speak. That's the pressure that you put on that nozzle when you squeeze it. Now, if you don't use faith, the water that you turned on at to speak it won't be able to get to the designated place you told it to go to, right? So the grace of God comes on your life, that saving power that saves your soul from the destruction that the enemy wants to play in your mind. That faith that you put in his word through the finished work of Jesus is what allows his power of the spirit to come upon your life and strengthen the areas of weakness in our lives because we all got them. We all got to fight every day. We all have the mental battle every day. We have the warfare that we have to go through every day. But it's the grace of God that comes on our life because we put faith in the word of God that empowers us to overcome every situation that the enemy has sent to destroy. Amen? Amen. So today we're going to talk about faith in action. Living by faith and taking on God's word, on God's kingdom reality means applying your whole being to the word of God. It means applying your whole being to the Word of God. We are a three-part person, spirit, soul, and we live in a body. We are first the spirit, we possess a soul, and then we live in a body. Now, because of sin, because of the fall of Adam, because of his decision, his will for decision, all of these things got disrupted by sin. The life of God departed out of the heart of man. And men begin to live by our senses, our five senses. You touch, you taste, you feel, you smell. You start living by what you feel, right? But God had a plan. He said, listen, I'm still going to be your God. You're still going to be my people. I'm still going to send my word. My word's still going to deliver you. But here's the thing now. In order for it to work in your life, you're going to have to choose to believe it over what you feel. You're going to have to start choosing to do it over what you think you should be doing. Because when you begin to take yourself out of your own understanding and acknowledge me in all of your ways, I'll begin to direct your path again, just like he did with Adam. Everybody admit me? This is what Jesus came to restore in our lives, a walk with God, a divine relationship with the eternal God in which none of your, the rest of your days are lived by yourself. 
Your life is no longer yours to dictate. God's perfect plan for your life can be walked out by you following his direction and doing what he called you to do. So today, what we want to establish is, because we've been establishing the word all the way up to this point, believe in the word, 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 believe in the word. But today we want to establish, it's not just about just believing the word, now it's about acting that word out. Doing what it told you to do and not allowing life to cause you to become sluggish, slothful, lazy. I just love Jesus, but I don't feel like doing that. Anybody ever feel like that? I know the COVID done done some of that to some of us because I don't feel that way sometimes. I love you, Jesus, but today I don't feel like doing X, Y, Z. I don't feel like talking to that neighbor today. And I know I'm supposed to say something to her, but I'm tired. I'm tired of being in my house. I'm tired of eating the same food, looking at the same people. I love my wife. I love my children. Okay, I'm being too real. But there's a crucifixion that begins to happen as the word enters into your heart. Why? Because we have to remember that where the will of the, when faith comes, the will of God is being made known. When faith comes, the will of God is being made known. What are you saying, Pastor Brian? What I'm saying is when you open up the word of God and you look into the principles of faith and you see what the mind of God is towards you, you immediately got to respond to it and say, this is his desire for my life. Now, whether or not I feel like that today or not, that's the truth. He said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this morning I woke up late. I don't feel like being rejoicing, right? But what did the truth say? The truth said rejoice. So if that is the truth, that means there's somewhere God wants to take you. There's a place he wants to elevate you in your thinking so that you don't go through the rest of your day with that frustration. I got to elevate. I got to get you out of that emotion. There's a work you got to do. Let me continue. Once you know what the will of God is about and the matter that he's talking about, it becomes our responsibility to renew our minds. Romans tells us that we are to renew our minds, that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. This is our reasonable service. It doesn't say he's going to present you. He said, you got to do it. I'm going to tell you what you need to do, but it's on you to wake up every day and present yourself to God. And that's a choice. This is why he said you have to renew your mind because you got to get your mind conditioned to say, God, you're first, not me. And whatever you tell me to do, that's my first option. What I want to do is going to come after that. Because how many of you know if you do what the will of God is for your life, he'll redeem your time for you to do what you want to do. God is in the promotion business. Let me continue. Part of the renewing of the mind is taking on the action that you are being called to do. All right? So when we begin to talk about, we sang a beautiful song today, would you meet me here in the middle? I'm here in the middle. Because how many of you know when you start a journey, you start excited, right? God is taking me somewhere. Woo! Boy, Lord, it's taking me. I'm about to become a champion of the world. I'm about to save my whole community. Almost with the whole city of Winston-Salem going to be on fire by next week. I'm going to speak a word that dries up the bones that cause them to come back to life. Because I got fire living in me, right? But the minute you step out there, what happened? Life happens. That first person you talk to don't want to hear it. You get no response. Why? Because from the time God comes to you and speaks, you know what his will is for your life. But as you begin to take that first step, you realize that what he told you ain't going to come easy. So you're going to have to do things that promote what you believe. I got to keep going. Faith will produce godly character when it is spoken and acted upon. So again, as we take this journey and you begin to see God's word, the first thing you got to do is start speaking what he said. You say it because that's where the activation is. Remember, the lever to the pump, grace is going to come through faith, but the water ain't going to come out if you don't squeeze the handle. So you squeeze the handle by speaking. That's what sets the whole thing in motion to cause the release to begin to happen, right? But not only do you start speaking, now you start acting on what you said. The Spirit of God will begin to show you the words that you said and how to act them out. This is the process of renewing your mind. You start telling yourself what you need to start thinking, and then you start doing the things that line up with what you're now trying to think. Everybody catching what I'm saying? I'm working on my health. Our family is working on our health. Y'all continue to pray for your pastor, Amen. Because I love sugar. Praise the Lord. 
Now, I'm doing better with sodas, doing better. But this water thing, this water thing, me and the Lord have had many discussions along with my wife. And now my children who hold me accountable. Have you had water today? And you know what your immediate response want to be is, that ain't your business. <laughs> it's my life. <laughs> but, but the doctor says that you need to drink more water, right? If you want to live a healthy life according to the word of God. Now, we're going somewhere now. God said, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Now, I believe that. But I can't just believe it and not do the actions that correspond with what I believe. Right? So now every day, I got to tell myself, Brian, at least try to get you two bottles of water. At least. I need more, but I got to celebrate small victories. That's for somebody. You got to learn how to celebrate your small victories. Sometimes we want the big thing, but in the midst of the journey, you got to understand that one step towards the right direction is a good step. God has said, good job. Way to go. You are my child. I know you can do it because you're stepping towards purpose. You're stepping into destiny. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop because I ain't even got to my context. This is the enduring work. So this is what renewing the mind, this is what the two parts of renewing the mind are. Speaking the word and then acting on what you believe. Just start doing it because what's going to start happening is your character is being built. The more you say no to what you want and yes to what he's calling you to do, there's going to be parts of you that are going to be stripped away. It's called dying to self so that the glory of God can be raised up in your life. You'll start seeing God's reality and you'll start seeing his results. Come on, somebody. Let's just go to James. We want to produce the resurrected life of Christ in every area of our lives. James 2 is where we will begin. Hallelujah. James is talking to the church here. He's trying to get the people of God to understand, listen, you can't just say you're saved. There's something you got to be doing. Being saved ain't enough. I'm, God has called you to a work. So let's go. 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? He's asking a question. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute or of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warm and filled. But you do not give them a, a thing which, is, which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Somebody comes to you and tell you that they need something. You go, oh, go in peace, praise God, but I'm praying for you. But you got what they need in your hand. Your faith says he that lives to the poor lives to the Lord. God said, I'll repay. Now, if I believe that, then my heart then is to do what God is telling me to do. So when I see a brother in need and I have what I can give to them to satisfy the need, then I do it because that's what my faith tells me to. So he's using this as an example, right? Let's see, let's, verse 17. Thus, also faith by itself does not have work without works is dead. It's inoperable. It's not doing nothing. Just to say, I love Jesus, but you're not doing what Jesus called you to do. It's an ineffective faith. Why? Because faith is two parts. It's speaking and do, doing. Doing. Let's continue. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. The devil knows that there's a God, but he ain't following his instructions. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? That was some true faith right there. Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. By what? Works. Faith was made perfect. Now, I wanna, I'm going to fix this here in just a second because I know we're living in this grace, right? So we know that it's not our works that justifies us. It's our faith that justifies us. Let me continue. Verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and, that, and he was called a friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works, not by faith alone. So here's the thing. Righteousness is not based on your works. It is based on your faith. 
All right? So believing the word of God puts you in a righteous status with God. So that means that whatever you begin to do by faith, it's going to work. But we also know that you are, we are living in a two-part realm. There's a spiritual realm, then there's a physical realm. The spiritual realm is where you speak and believe in your heart and in your mind. The physical realm is where you act out what you speak and believe. So you can't just speak and believe and have righteousness in your heart, but then don't do the righteous act. Because that's where the manifestation begins to profit you in your natural life. It's already profited you in your spirit when you heard the word. Your spirit got excited. But now you want to see it here, right? That's what we want to see, right? We want to see the goodness of the God in the land of the living. So therefore, this is what James is saying. He's saying, listen, when you begin to hear the word and you say you believe the word, the, the enemy knows that the word is real because he'll use the word to try to trick you. But here's what the enemy won't do. He won't do what God said. He's always going to rebel. So that's why the Bible always talks about disobedience, having the father who is the devil. But the son of obedience is Jesus because Jesus followed the perfect will of God even unto death. But even in death, death couldn't hold him. Death only made him stronger. You see the picture? When you begin to act out your faith, it'll feel like you're losing everything. It'll feel like you're dropping it. Lord, this is what I thought I needed. This is what I thought I had. It's, he's like, no, I got it for you, but I got a better version of it. Why? Because my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So when you begin to do what I'm calling you to do, I'm asking you to separate from your opinion and grab mine. So righteousness then comes by faith. But here's the thing. When you believe you're righteous, you begin to do the work. When you believe you're righteous, you do the work of righteousness. It's not the other way around. I'm going to do the work of righteousness, and that means unrighteous. No, you got to first believe it. This is why you meditate on the word. This is why the word has become your function. This is why the word of God has become your communication. Why? Because the more you communicate the words, the more you rewire the way you think. The more you rewire the way you think, the more you see yourself the way the words you're saying. Because the only person you're going to believe more, more than God is yourself. We can talk ourselves out of something and talk ourselves into something. Just like that, right? So how do we begin to use that power to shift our thinking to see it the way God sees it and then start doing it the way God's doing it? We take God's word, start speaking God's word, allow God's word to transform the pictures and the images in our mind. And as those words begin to transform the way we see life, we begin to act out what we see in our mind. It's called premeditation. You've heard that term before, right? So when you begin to believe you're righteous, your work becomes a righteous work. And because your work is a righteous work in faith, it is rewarded by God, who is the promoter and the rewarder of those who diligently come on somebody. Let's go to Proverbs 6, 6 through 11. <clears throat> Proverbs 6, 6 through 11 starts here. It says, <clears throat> excuse me, go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, <clears throat> provides her supplies in the summer, and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When you arise, when you rise from your sleep, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little fold in other hands to sleep, shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Notice what wisdom is speaking to the body of Christ. He's saying, listen, God is calling you into a work, right? You saved, you got the word of God in your heart, but then when God begins to move you in a direction to start doing a certain task, he said, listen, this is not the time to get sleepy. This is not the time to sit down. This is not the time to fold your hands and say, I'll do it tomorrow. This is not the time to say, well, you know, I would try, but. He said, no, 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 no. As we're going to look at these steps here in just a second, when God begins to call you into an action, he said, listen, first, I got to get you to believe that you've been called to it. Paul said, make sure that your calling on election is sure, Right? You've been called the righteousness of God in Christ. Can I get a hand lifted for all the righteous people in the house? Praise God, I'm in the right group of people. So if I've been called the righteousness of God in Christ, and I believe that I've been called the righteousness of God in the Christ, then that means I have a job now. I am now a minister of reconciliation. My job now is to go into the world and show forth the goodness of him who has brought me out of darkness and into this marvelous light, and now take those who have far been removed themselves far from God and through my life, and my communication, and my behavior, 
in my walk. Call those people back towards God. That's work. Because some of the people he's going to call you to, they're not going to be so lovable. They ain't going to be nice. They're not going to have the same views you got. They ain't going to like the same music you like. They might be tatted from head to toe. They might not have no tats on them at all. They may have a dress that go all the way down to their toes and their head totally coated up, though you can only see their eyes. But God called you to them just as much as he called you here. Husband, God called you to your family. That's a work. My first ministry is right over here. He called me to her. That's my work. But how many of you know every day ain't easy? Every day ain't easy. That's the testimony to you. That's the reality. I know we're close to God. I pray. I live close to his heart. I hear his heart. But you know what? Sometimes I get in my feelings and I frustrate her. Sometimes she get in her feelings and she frustrates me. But you know what I cannot do? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the end of the age. That's the work. That's the work. We live in a society now where people get in a tough situation, and the first thing you want to do is, I'm done. You done hurt my feelings twice. Can't do it. I'm over you. You keep saying the same thing and doing the same thing. You go to a job. The boss keeps telling you to do something that you wasn't on your job assignment. When I signed up for this job, you did not tell me I had to do bathrooms. You didn't tell me that. I quit. Well, what are you not doing to the righteous assignment that God sent you in that job to do? And they said, you're a Christian. You're a believer. It's work. That's part of the work. It's not enough to say, I love Jesus and go to work. Then you got to go to work and do the job. Amen? Amen. There's work and then there's a job. We all know we got a job. But do we go to work and do the job? Oh, that's tight, right? Right. Lord, I'm just going to do just enough to get through the day. I might just hit quota. But the Spirit of God is says in you, you got an excellent spirit. Don't do just enough. Do. Is everybody following me? Because some of you are looking for a promotion. But the reason you're not getting the promotion is because you're just going in and doing barely enough. But God is saying, listen, I'm going to show you how not to just be an employee, but become an owner. Can I get a witness in the house? Can I get a witness in the house? I'm trying to help us raise our expectation because you have an owner spirit with a stewardship mentality. I have to teach on that another day. You are heirs of the world. Let me tell you that. Capture that. But here's the thing. The work isn't going into the place where God has told you to go. Whether that be a marriage, whether that be a job, whether that be church, whether that be a friendship, a relationship, whether it be a situationship. You got to work to do even in situationships. You got to cut some stuff off. Because the situation ain't right. Your face says you should have never got into relationship. I don't know where we're going, but... The faith says you shouldn't have got into it. But emotion said, I need somebody. So, over, so emotion overwhelmed faith. And you stepped into something you shouldn't have been in. But faith now calls you out. So are you going to believe God and then do the corresponding action? But I need him. No, you don't. In this season, you need me, God said. Because there's something I want to heal on the inside of you. There's a restoration I want to do in your soul so that I can bring you to the person. Somebody ain't listening. It's okay. I'm going to keep going. 
Because every work you do is lining your character up for something greater God has for you down the road. Is everybody following me? You were created to do the work of God in the earth. Faith is relentless, a relentless force that does not quit until it, to the total word of God is finalized. Faith does not stop. Faith is a relentless force. When God says, I want you healed, he's going to work on you every day to get that healing out of you. Because he knows it's already in there. Now, what he's asking us to do is commit to that same word. If I said I'm going to heal you, I need you to believe I'm going to heal you. Now, that healing is going to call you to do something. And you got to get committed to it. This is the work on your end that God is saying, here, this is what I'm putting in your hands. Take ownership of what I've called you to. Now, walk it out. Because as you walk it out, you're walking out your soul's salvation. Y'all catching it. I can see it on your face. Vision is the end result. Mission is the steps to get there. Everybody has a vision, right? Vision is what you see down the road. But the mission are the steps that you take to get there. And let me help you. The steps aren't always straight. Sometimes a step might be over here. It start leading you to go this. And he said, now, nah, you got that? Go over here. You got that? Now, go over here. You got that? Now, go meet this person. You got that? Now go take this class. You got that? Now go get this session in. You got that? All of these things are working together for you according to his will for your good. That's what that scripture thinks, that scripture means. All things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord. Stop. Pause. Think about that for a second. What does it mean to love the Lord? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my command. Obey what I say. In the mind of God, that's love. If you love me, listen to what I'm telling you, because I'll never lead you somewhere where you don't need to be, right? So when I begin to hear the word that tells me to do it a certain way, and I begin to operate in that way, there's going to be challenges, but I choose to commit myself to what I heard. Having done all to stand, stand, therefore. Having your loins girt about with the belt of truth. Having on the helmet of righteousness. Reminding yourself that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Why? Because there's darts coming at you all day long to tell you you're not enough. You'll never accomplish it. It's not going to happen. You ain't got what it takes. You think they really like you? You think that's really going to work? Your words now become the defense. It is the shield of faith. That quenches every fiery dart. It is the standard that the Spirit of the Lord lifts up, right? You begin to tell him, it is written. <sighs> Stay composed. It is written. And if it is written, it is final. You got that on? Can't, that's right. Can't, it's, if it's written, then it's final. Is sealed in blood, covered by the Holy Ghost, washed over by, by God himself, because he hastens over his word to perform it. The angels of the Lord move and hearken to the voice of the word. So you got all of heaven backing you when you stand on the word from God. So yes, the darts are going to come. The thoughts are going to come. But you combat the thoughts with the words out of your mouth. This is why he said, your word do I set in my heart that I might not sin against God. He said, it's the word that I keep so that I don't become offended or be made to stumble. It's the word that keeps you in place, right? But then that same word that keeps you in place is going to tell you when it's time to move. It's going to tell you the actions that you need to do. When things begin to get frustrating, when things begin to get aggravating, it's the word of God now that rises up against in your, in your innermost being. And it's the love of God that now restrains you. Are you with me? To go and do the things that God has called you to do. To go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now it's the word of God that becomes your confidence. To use the word of God in every situation that you are in. To not allow fear to overtake you. Let's go into step one, phase one of this. And we'll get this thing done. Everybody with me? Hallelujah. Number one is fear will always try to keep you in the past. Fear will always try to keep you in the past. 
And any time there's a sluggish season in your life, it's because there's something that you're holding on to that was in your past that won't allow you to see yourself in the future. There's something that hurt some traumatic situation, the way somebody treated you, the way you see yourself, that is keeping you from seeing yourself doing what God has called you to do. All right? This is what the word comes for. He said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all of their destruction, right? So this is why, again, when the faith comes, the will of God is known. So when you're going through a situation and you know you've been called to do something, but it seems like you're being seized up every time you want to try it, you go back to the word and confirm yourself with God's word. This is what God calls me. I am an heir of righteousness. I am the seed of, I am the seed of Abraham. Therefore, my faith is causing me to have a righteous account with God. Therefore, I can walk this thing out through the blood of Jesus, by the word of God. I am more than enough. I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. What he called me to be, I can be. People's words don't make me God's word. It's his word that's final. You got a lot of opinions, but his word is always the truth. So it's always got to be faith over fear. We've not heard that term before, right? We got shirts to say it now. Faith over fear. But what does that mean? That means I got to believe what God said even over the way I feel. There are times when I look at the vision that God has given me and I'm like, Jesus, when? I'm ready. <laughs> Come on, Lord. I know this thing is happening, but there are days when you look at it, it's like, God, I don't know. This thing is big. You want me to do this? And every time I do that, this is what I hear the Lord saying to me. Um, he said, that's why you were made. And that's what I hold on to. I was made to carry it out. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. What God put in your heart wasn't an accident. It's big because he's going to have to be involved for it to come to pass. Your emotions are going to try to hold you in place and tell you that you weren't made for such a work. But that's when you got to go back to the word of God and say, no, this is what he made me for. So I now have to receive that word and wake up each morning and catch that word tell me what to do for the day. Here recently, I was talking to my brother Charles, and Charles was asking me some of the things that I'm currently doing, and one of the things that God told me is now it's time for you to go back to your office. It's time for you to start working in your office again, okay? You done had the COVID, you know, quarters, and you done quarantined yourself from your office, and you done tried to work out of your house and, and work for a season. But you know what I started doing? I started getting comfortable in my couch. I got my laptop in my lap. You know, I'm getting some stuff done, but it's not the amount that God is calling me to do. It's like, a, a, because my house is my resting place. That's not my business place. Upstairs is my business place. When I come through them doors, it's like my mind just goes. I see vision. I see stuff that need to be done. I need to know when it needs to get done. Like, it begins to become a part, it, my vision awakens. So he said, no, it's time for you to go back to your office. So you know what I had to do? I had to make a decision. When I wake up in the morning, I'm making up my mind, I'm going to work. Just like my wife wakes up, gets to her job, I wake up and go to my job. It's a mindset. It had to shift it. And every morning I have to retrain myself, go to work. The days I want to sit in there and just go right back home, go to work. And what I'm realizing is, as I do this, stuff is just falling into place. Because this is the work that he called you to. Amen? Opportunities are doorways. Opportunities are doorways. You got to see everything in your life as an opportunity. See everything in your life as an opportunity. Even if it's a challenge to you, recognize it as an opportunity. If you don't, it's going to cause you to become stagnant and sluggish. You won't do nothing. Because if you see it as bigger than you, you're going to stop. If you see yourself as not being able to do it, you're going to stop. If you see too many conflicts in it, you're going to stop. But if you see it as an opportunity to grow or an opportunity to succeed, you stick with it. Faith is always opportunistic. God is always opening doors for you to walk through. But if you're not looking for doors, you won't see doors. You're going to always see what you believe. 
God, that's for us. That's for me too. Hallelujah. If you seek doors always closed, you won't see an open door when it's open because you'll see it as a closed door. But when you start looking at the day for open doors, you always walk through the ones that you're supposed to walk to, through. Is everybody following? Number three, doing what's right will come with questions and challenges. Doing what's right will come with questions and challenges. Just because you chose to do the right thing don't mean you're always going to know what to do. So there's going to be questions. So what does the scripture tell us? If any man lacks wisdom, ask of the Father who gives liberally and upbraideth not. Wisdom comes from the mouth of God, right? So that means when you begin to hit those moments where you're like, God, I don't know what I'm doing. Go back to God. And God will reveal it through many avenues. He may tell you in prayer. He may tell you through a song you're listening to. He may tell you through a friend. It may come in a dream or a vision. But again, if you're looking for open doors, you'll always see it. And it'll keep you from becoming stuck. It'll keep you from becoming stagnant. And you'll always be willing to do the work God is calling you to do. Has everybody followed me thus far? Number four, apply yourself to what is needful, not to what is always desired. Apply yourself to what is needful, not to what is always desired. We all have a desire to see things happen, right? We all have a desire to see things happen. But there are things that are first needful before you see the big time, you know, situation come to pass. If there's something God wants to work out of your life, he's not going to put the thing you desire in your hands because that desirable thing is going to destroy you. You'll make an idol out of it. It'll become something you desire more than you desire him. So if you desire the thing more than you desire God, God ain't going to ask you that because you're asking amiss. You're asking for your own personal gain. So first you got to do the thing that's needful. What's needful? The word. What did the word tell you to do? Because the word is going to develop your character. Why? Because it's going to reprove you, correct you, get you right so that you are thoroughly equipped for what? Every good work. So when the good thing comes, you're ready to do the work that comes with it. It's equipping. When things challenge you, be opportunistic. Why? Because it's going to teach me something that's training me for a greater task. If I don't do this, then I'll never see the desired result. So I must do what's first needful. I got to win this battle. Hallelujah. So don't lean on to your own understanding. Follow him and lead, let him lead your, your path. The fifth one is this, and this is the last one. Falling is not failure. Get up and try again. The righteous man falls seven times in. So you got to have a persistent attitude. You got to be persistent. Not only opportunistic, but persistent. You might have knocked on that door 50 times and you ain't seen nothing happen. But on the 51st time. Did this door just open? Yes, because you're ready now. You weren't ready the first time you knocked. It was just a good idea, but you hadn't matured. You wanted something you weren't ready for, so I'm not going to allow you to step into that because it's going to consume you. But here's the thing. I'm going to grow you for it. You may be in the ground right now, but you're not going to stay there as long as you keep yourself watered. Doing the work, speaking the word, waking up each morning and developing yourself, getting your schedule together, walking out what he told you to walk, not allowing the things of this world to disrupt the call on your life, staying on purpose, talking to the people he told you to talk to, going to the places he told you to go to, doing the things he's told you to do. It's all developing something on the inside of you, not letting the challenge stop you, but seeing it as an opportunity to grow. And even if I fall in this moment, I'm going to learn from the falling. What did I just figure out? I can't do it like that. I can't think like that. I can't talk like that. I can't treat people that way. That's why I fail. Now I got to get this thing right. It's not their problem. Problem is mine. It's never the stuff around me. It's the stuff that's working in me. He's working something out. As I'm working towards it, something's being worked out. So I can't just lean on the fact that I love Jesus. And we do. But Jesus is calling the church to a greater work.
stand up with me. Jesus is calling the church to a greater work. The church got to wake up. Ephesians 2, awake ye who sleep, and Christ will give you life. He said, wake up, church. Come out of this slumberous season. Come out of just kind of going through the lethargic work. Come out of your aggravation and your emotions because I'm calling you into something that's going to have to override the way you feel about stuff. No, you don't like what you see on the news. No, you don't like what the government systems are doing. No, you don't like the way the job is working. No, you don't like the way the relationship is going. No, you don't like where you are financially right now. No, you don't like the report the doctor just gave you. But I'm calling you to something. Wake up. Because I'm about to reconcile. I'm about to realign. I'm about to heal. I'm about to restore. I'm about to deliver. I'm going to make new the thing that you thought was going to destroy you. I'm going to show you that the life in you is greater. The life in you is greater. But here's the thing. You can't just believe it. You got to do something. You got to do something. Wake up with purpose. Wake up on purpose. Intentionally. I'm going to do something great today. Even if it means just sticking to what I was told to do. That was the greatness for today. It ain't always got to be Magnus and big. Sometimes it can be just as simple as saying, you know what, God, today... I'm not going to cuss today. I ain't going to say one cuss word today because life and death is in the... And if I can't deliver your tongue, I can't deliver your life. I'm not going to let frustration get me today. Every time something hit me that want to frustrate me, I'm going to start singing. That might be your goal for the week. But there's victory in the persistence. See, everything is an opportunity. Don't, if you fall, get up. Stand under the blood and consider that last fall. Not, it, it, it don't register. Because he forgets it, so am I. You're about to walk in the greatest days of your life. Lift your hands. You're going to live in the greatest days of your life here on this earth. Are you following me? You're going to live in the greatest days of your You're going to live the most free days of your life. You hear me? You're going to live so free, you're not going to understand why nothing is bothering you anymore. You're going to be like, God, I got so many things to do, but I know it can be accomplished because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm anointed to overcome the day. I don't belong to the day. The day belongs to me. He said, redeem the time. You redeem it. You tell the day what it's going to be for you. And watch God begin to perfect that day as you walk. Will it have challenges? Yes, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Can you do it? Yes, you can do it. Can you say it? Yes, you can say it. Can I believe it? Yes, you can believe it. Hear the Father say that to you. Can I believe my whole family going to be saved? Yes, you can believe it. Can I speak to my neighbor and, and impart wisdom into their life? Yes, you can do it. Can I go to my job and change the whole workplace? Yes, you can do it. Alexa, come here. Yes, ma'am. As soon as I said, can I change the job, your name came. Your name. Are you ready to change your job? You are more than equipped to do it. The spirit of the Lord is in your mouth. And the Spirit of the Lord says, you're going to speak as an oracle of God. What he tells you to say, say it. Even if it's not out loud. When you go in the building and you touch the grounds and speak over the grounds, he said, I'm giving you the place where your feet step. That's for you. In the name of Jesus, by faith we receive it. That's your work. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we're here. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you've brought to us today. We are committed to the work. We are committed to it. Now, wisdom. Spirit of wisdom, 
We thank you that you teach us how to number our days, that we may live before God and see his reality in everything we do. In the name of Jesus, declare this with me. Father, my heart is open. My mind is receptive. I will do the work that you have called me to. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Prepare for your heart to be flooded with things to do. Write them down. Get it, get, get it done. Amen. If you want to give today, you can give through our Tithely app. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can give here as you're leaving. You can mail it in as well. Uh, but we believe that as you give, good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. And we thank God that as you sow into the kingdom, God is causing your life to flourish. I believe that as you sow, I also believe that he gives you the spirit of insight. I believe he gives you spiritual insight on financial decisions to make. I believe that he gives you insight on business deals to go into. I believe he gives you insight on sales and commissions, all the things that are connected to your life. I believe that he causes it to flourish and thrive. If you believe that, say amen. We love you here at New Life. If you desire to be with us, we are here every week at 1020. Please pre-register. God is doing something in this house, and you don't want to miss it. You are a part of a move and an army of God that is going to do amazing work. I love you to life. God bless you. Hallelujah.